I'm pleased to welcome my first guest today, uh, Jen Drew Scott, who is the founding partner of In Capital. Uh, Jen is a world-renowned technologist and investor, and she's been named to the Forbes World Top 50 Women in Tech. She's been investing in deep technology and pride of wealth for over 20 years, and we're so pleased, Jen, to have you here today. Thank you so much, Anastasia. Great to be here. It's great to be here with you in Singapore. So I want to start off by asking you, you know, what is, in your mind, the greatest opportunity about artificial intelligence and blockchain and perhaps the convergence between the two? In 2017, 2018, we hear everybody talking about blockchain. Nobody was talking about AI. And now everybody's talking about AI. Nobody's talking about blockchain. I actually think none of the technology is going to be evolved in isolation. The convergent part of um, blockchain AI is actually, I think, where the biggest opportunity is. Because right now, the AI model is very much building on harvesting as much as data as possible uh, from individuals, corporates. Um, in the society, that AI is so pervasive, drive every aspect of life. It's actually very, very important to keep individuals' data sol you know, sovereignty and also corporates' data sovereignty. Mm -hmm. So AI is very good at creates and blockchain is very good at authenticates. Mm -hmm. And when you live in the society that every bit of data, every bit of transaction actually generates some uh, economic value, blockchain becomes very important. From your perspective, what are some of the biggest risks that we need to address when it comes to AI and blockchain? Biggest risk in AI is uh, the hype of AGI and um, people monetizing the fear, either from geopolitical or uh, over-exaggerate the capability of AI. But also the nature of large language model right now, how data goes in and content comes out, uh, is still essentially a black box. So um, we think in the social media age in the past 15 years has, been, has done a great damage to younger generations, well-being, uh, democracy, um, you know, fake news, etc. Uh, unfortunately, I think with generative AI, we haven't seen anything yet. We will not be able to distinguish the real uh, footage with the AI generated footage, uh, where to believe, where to trust, right? I think what I'm observing right now in our society, people who know the what and how uh, are not really pausing thinking about the why and why not. And people asking the question why and why not, often either they don't know the how and what, or they don't have the platform to really build, right? You know, this year is the biggest election year in the global uh, pol politics, you know, more than 100 countries going through elections. So there are a couple of companies that actually go through the media content, especially the photos and footages that become viral, impact a lot of people. Um, they authenticate and start to build in this kind of a digital archive that's every single piece of media is verified. And I think 100 years from now, we look back our human history, especially looking back the human digital history, those kind of archive will serve as, um, as trusted source instead of whatever you can find online. Yeah. But let's shift to practice. And at In Capital, you focus on investing in artificial intelligence and blockchain and other deep tech technologies. So maybe give us a flavor for some of the investments that you're seeing that are interesting uh, for you and your clients. Our thesis is that, number one, a large language model is probably going to be uh, commoditized. And uh, there may be five companies in the world to, who can truly do that. Um, if you look at OpenAI, just raised a $6.6 .6 billion on equity and then the $4 plus billion on credit from various banks. Uh, that $10 plus billion is roughly about 18 months of the runway, which is crazy. So, right. I don't think there will be more than a handful of companies who would truly be able to do this. And even the handful of companies, at some point, they will have to face the reality. You know, how is this uh, ROI? So we tend to invest in companies that have uh, genuine innovation, such as U.com. Uh, it's a U.S.-based company, uses generative AI, NLP, to reimagine what search engine should be. So my search engine actually lives on WhatsApp, and uh, I ask my bot a question, and it will summarize everything online, but also give me the link of the original source. So it's not completely you know, regurgitated, and you don't know if it's true or not, you can verify. Uh, we also invest in companies that have uh, proprietary data that's very, very uh, important for the industry. So for example, Essentia is also a US company. They build large language model for talents. So how do you analyze the talent? I'm also quite excited for some of the boring uh, AI companies we investing. A Hong Kong-based company uh, called Cleardo AI, and they 
uh, not using any fancy AI. They're basically using local langu language NLP yeah. and uh, build a customer service bot uh, live, lives on all the messaging apps. And now they are one of the largest SME uh, service bots in the world and double digit growth, 40% um, annual growth. So they are able to compete with, with some of the larger tech companies. Yes, yes, which is super exciting. You know, you find you find the niche and you make it, you know, market entry very, very easy and really truly solve a big problem. You could be a flower shop in Brazil and pay a few hundred dollars and you can have a bot to serve your customers. What about on the blockchain side? Are there any specific standout investment opportunities that you see there? We exclusively focus on solutions that will serve uh, regulated institutions. Uh -huh. And it will be very exciting to see uh, what kind of change we'll make in terms of regulatory side on, on digital assets in the U.S. So I think the adoption by large regulated institutions will will put a lot of capital into crypto. I think, you know, we haven't seen anything yet. So the most exciting time uh, for institutions like Goldman, BlackRock, et cetera, like full speed going to this space will completely change the landscape and tokenization as well. And do you think that's a good idea? I think overall is, is a very um, necessary idea because it brings liquidity, fractionalized um, transaction, uh, make um, a lot of um, uh, transaction immutable, therefore, you know, very easy to keep, um, you know, record, etc. But also keep a lot of um, uh, asset become very programmable, right? If you're issuers or if you're intermediary, you know, being programmable will uh, significantly improve the efficiency and transparency of those transactions. Um, however, um, Right now, I think uh, there's a misunderstanding um, in terms of putting asset on public chain or private chain. Most of the banks and institutions, they, when they say tokenization, they're actually putting uh, assets on their private chain, um, uh -huh. which becomes problematic for inter-institution inter transactions. Um, I think that's a missed opportunity. So I'm on the board of uh, right now largest layer one blockchain in the world. The idea is to really make this kind of very highly, highly scalable uh, web two world ready, web three technology to serve the financial institutions, gaming industry, et cetera. But what do you think it would take to actually kind of unleash that adoption more broadly? So I, I'm i a, I'm a student of math, but um, I spent a lot of time reading history. And uh, I think uh, whenever we're facing some big challenges, often you can find references that happen in history. Right now, we're at the stage where every single institution is thinking for themselves. They are in kind of a zero-sum competing kind of mindset. Mm -hmm. But if we look at where New York Stock Exchange came about, it's actually multiple institutions uh, dropped their competitive stance and, and came together and decided, to, look, guys, let's make a market, right? So I think right now for digital assets, um, institutions need to come together and make a market together. If you build each build your world garden, it's defeating the purpose. Um, you have to have this kind of interoperability between different assets, different, di between different institutions. Uh, that requires collaboration. Uh, right. So zero sum mentality does not work. Well, we're a huge believer in that. And the iCapital uh, DLT, the distributed ledger technology, focuses on just that, bringing the consortium together to make sure that everybody has the visibility and transparency into how a fund gets transacted in and how the capital calls happen. Um, so, Jen, this has been fantastic. And I could uh, ask you so many more questions. But I guess my last one, if you were not doing AI or blockchain, uh, where would you be focused on? Huh. I always say if I... If I want to do a PhD now, I probably will either go to neuroscience or quantum physics. I think this is the next uh, mind-blowing rabbit hole um, that I spend a lot of my spare time reading about, especially with AI. The more you want to understand how machine intelligence could work and what would not work, you have to understand our human brain. The origin of, uh, of intelligence is one of the biggest mysteries. Um, of uh, of our world, and um, I would love to have time to just dig very deep in those fields. I would love for you to do that. Uh, as uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, you were thinking about blockchain and artificial intelligence well before you know it became mainstream. So pay attention. <laughs> Jen is thinking about quantum physics right now. Uh, Jen, uh, this has been fantastic. Thanks so much for joining us here in Singapore. Thank you so much.